All right, welcome to making the 150 gallon reef. Uh, behind me is a 150 gallon reef cube, which is a three foot by three foot by 27 inches tall uh, aquarium that used to be a grow out tank for some freshwater fish. But now I've converted it into a low tech reef aquarium. And so what do I mean by low tech? Low tech means it is using just biological principles and not a lot of equipment. Now there's lights and there's water flow and there's of course a return pump, but most of the filtration uh, whether it be mechanical, biological, chemical, it's all coming from the, the inhabitants of the tank and the way the tank is structured. So it's gonna be coming from the deep sand bed, the live rock, the invertebrates, the cleaning crew, the macroalgaes, all those kinds of things. So rather than, you know, as I always say, rather than talk about it, let me show you. So this video is gonna start at the very beginning when this was first set up from scratch and it's gonna take you all the way up to three months to today and uh, you'll see where the tank has evolved to. And as with all tanks, what makes this hobby awesome is that it's just the beginning. There's a ton of evolution for this tank to go. And really, it only gets better from here. Let's check it out. So it has been running now for a few weeks, probably between two and three. And if you can see the diatom algae growing on the rocks, I think you can definitely see it down here on the sand and on the walls. It is cycling. So how have we cycled it? Definitely not with fish. What we've done is three things. We've come down into the sump here. We have added live rock from an existing tank. We have put a piece of shrimp that's been decaying and creating a ammonia source. And we've been adding bacteria. So that's a little bit and then I threw away the bottle already, but there was also bottled bacteria. And I'm gonna to continue to do that as I add the fish just to help ease the process. So tomorrow is a small batch of fish, three fish, three small fish, a small uh, batch of hermit crabs and a small batch of snails just to get everything going. So <clears throat> what we have to do is begin to populate the refugium and begin to populate the main tank since we have a uh, sort of symbiotic relationship between the two, we need to gener generate enough waste in the main tank to fuel the refugium, which will eventually have lots of pods, lots of marine plants, and uh, lots of uh, cleanup tube critters. Cleanup critters. And the other thing we did was change the plumbing. So this used to be a single drain that came down, and now there's two. I mean, it actually didn't affect the water, but water coming to that one and this one's fuzzing up for some reason probably up but uh <clears throat> spreading that out over the two socks it just made it easier to uh control the water flow so if one sock starts to get dirty it doesn't just overpower it all right we're flashing forward two months on the 150 making a reef tank um the live rock is well the base rock is starting to become live rock you can see the coralline algae and as you, well, there's that you can't see it, but there's a lot of bacteria growing everywhere. Um, it is becoming, slowly becoming live rock. I've added a few more pieces of existing live rock from the other aquarium, the 265. And basically what I've been doing with this tank is every few weeks, I've been adding a couple fish from the livestock list and building up the filtration system, building up the bacteria on the live rock, building up the sump the refugium sump and just getting the fish stock built up so that as the tank matures, I'll have the majority of the fish stock ready to, already acclimated already in the tank, the tank already adjusted for the fish load based on the bacteria and the filtration. And then I can start adding corals to a much more stable aquarium than doing that all at the same time. Uh, in the back there, I added another piece of live rock from the 265 and that one has a baby rose bubble tip anemone on it. So I'm looking forward to that guy growing up and hopefully giving a home to the uh, Fiji Baberi clowns. Um, while I've also been building up the display tank, I've been building up the refugium as well. So lots and lots of live rock going into refugium. So this is a three foot by three foot refugium full of live rock, macroalgae, and lots of 
critters, shrimp, crabs, snails, all that good stuff. So basically the water comes down and there's, there's nothing filtering out the particulates, bringing it right down there to those critters to eat any leftover foods or anything like that. And it's a highly oxygenated, very well lit environment. It's a great place for aerobic bacteria to live and for macroalgae to thrive. So that's the plan. The physical particulates from the tank, they get eaten up by the cleaning crew and the <clears throat> nutrients get taken out of the water or the water gets filtered by the aerobic bacteria and the nutrients get taken out by the macroalgae. So that's the plan with this tank going forward. And so right now you can expect to see a little more uh, growth in the livestock, the fish livestock and the invertebrate livestock. And then it'll pretty much be uh, a lot of corals coming after that uh, once I decide exactly which corals I want to put in here. But no surprise, the uh, clownfish and the tanks, first of the show. See some of the smaller guys, the six line wrasse and the uh, orchid dotty back. Um, not as easy to see as uh, the bigger guys, but they're out now. Uh, there's also a couple of uh, Wheeler's Watchman gobies and a yellow uh, canary blenny in here as well. But I think the, uh, actually there's the canary blenny in the back over there. And one of the gobies is chilling by the rock right here. But I'll uh, keep the camera back a little bit so I don't disturb the fish from their meal. Uh, everyone's been doing good. Uh, it was really important to get uh, the tangs in near the same time, uh, close together so they can uh, Get, get used to each other. Sometimes tangs can get you know pretty territorial with other tangs if they've been in the tank too long and too well established before adding another tang, unless you add a bunch. But this tank's only gonna have two, so can't really do that trick here. Uh, there's also a Coral Beauty, which I saw him poke out for a second, but he went back into the rock work. He is right down there, right on cue. Uh, so I love dwarf angels, but with all the uh, corals I want to keep, I needed to make sure I shot for one of the, you know, safest ones to keep with uh, corals. Uh, anything can happen. They all have different personalities, but uh, hopefully uh, the, this coral beauty ends up being uh, one of the good ones. I'm going to call this uh, first stage complete. So what we've done here is we've added the base rock, we've seeded it with some more mature rock from other aquariums, and we've built up the refugium. And we've built up the fish stock. Not the final stock, but pretty close. Only a few other uh, smaller fish will be added. <clears throat> but what you can see now is that we've got, uh, you know, along with the algae we want, we also have the coralline, we also have some you know, just regular algae starting to grow. Uh, so what that means is we're ready for the second half of the cleaning crew. If you remember initially, I just got half of what I needed for the aquarium and half of them went into the refugium down here and the other half into the, the main aquarium. But now that uh, the tank is fully cycled, it's time to get the other half. And the reason we do that is because we don't want to have a full cleaning crew with nothing to eat. You need you need this algae to grow and you need to have them come in, clean it up, and then um, <clears throat> keep it in check as the system matures. And the other thing, uh, as you can see, I did add a couple corals from the other aquarium. Now they're all closed up because they just got moved over to a new environment, but they are two uh, toadstool mushroom corals, soft corals, and that kind of tips uh, the hand of what this tank is going to be, which is mostly a softy reef. Um, there'll be polyp corals uh, and zoanthids, things like that, but mostly uh, some soft corals and macroalgaes. Um, and if I show you down here, that is some new additions which are going to be going in pretty soon. I just want to take a little bit of footage of the tank, uh, what I consider, so the first three months, it went from completely stood up to mature enough for fish to now having the built up fish stock and it's mature enough to go ahead and add uh, corals and the other half of the cleanup crew and the macroalgaes which are gonna 
be a major part of this aquarium because as you remember, this reef tank has no mechanical filter, no protein skimmer. It, the only equipment are the lights, heater, wave, wave maker, water pump, the return pump, and some more lights. So how do we deal with all the um, <clears throat> physical detritus? Well, it, it comes down to these pipes and it goes into all that live rock there. And inside of there are all kinds of crabs, lots of different types of crabs, um, snails, uh, shrimp, all kinds of uh, starfish, uh, all kinds of invertebrates that are gonna eat that detritus. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add macroalgae down there and some to the display tank and that's gonna help take away nitrate, as well as the bacteria that's growing all over all of this live rock. We have two types of bacteria growing. On the surface, we have aerobic bacteria, which is breaking down fish waste, like ammonia uh, <clears throat> and nitrite, and converting that to nitrate. And then in the cracks and crevices deeper in the live rock, where the UV light can't get to from the, the main lights, and where there's less oxygen, that, because the oxygen has been used up by the aerobic bacteria, living on the outside of the rock is the anaerobic bacteria which breaks down the nitrate so that's what we're looking for in this aquarium is we're looking for balance rather than brute force filtration techniques you have to go slower you have to be more mindful of all the stages we have to have the live rock we have to have the fish stock in balance with the amount of live rock and invertebrates that we have we have to have the invertebrates we need to have them sifting the sand eating the algae you know eating the detritus we need everything to be in balance but when it is it's it's really nice you save a lot of money on equipment and sometimes th with the equipment it can cause problems because you can be really good at breaking down uh, um, <clears throat> uh fish waste but then you get too much nitrate and you you know you basically you don't have enough uh denitrifying bacteria and you end up having to do lots of water changes to export that nitrate uh, which actually I should have mentioned you might notice the water looks a little cloudy that's because I did just do a water change um, so this is the first and only water change this tank has ever had and I just did it because uh, it's at the end of the three month mark I'm getting ready to add these new corals and macroalgaes and so I said well let's go ahead and just do a water change now okay so let me go ahead and add these things and then I'll take some more footage afterwards and we'll see what it looks like with the corals. All right, here's the 150 reef, three months in. As you can see, the fish are doing great. There's now coral frags introduced to the aquarium. Down here we have uh, some zoanthids, a bunch of soft coral frags added to the reef up top there and macroalgae, shaving brush, uh, calcium-based macroalgae. So along with what's in the uh, sump, the aquarium also has decorative macroalgae that fish won't eat, um, but will also remove nitrate from the water. So tank is really coming along. And the beautiful thing about uh, the beginning of a tank like this is just, just so much growth to come. You know, it's, uh, it's really cool seeing uh, the reef really come together and grow in. So the next steps for the reef are going to be um, not only adding more coral frags and, and building that up, but also completing the invertebrate cleanup crew to include some decorative uh, species like emerald uh, crabs, um, some of the cleaner shrimp. There is a coral banded shrimp in here, but I'll probably add a few more smaller uh, cleaner shrimp, uh, like peppermint shrimp, those, those sorts of things and as well as uh, a good crop of uh, sand sifters. Some Nasarius snails, which will burrow down in the sand and, and eat any food or detritus that gets in there, as well as a sand sifting star. Um, sand sifting stars are pretty voracious eaters, so I won't add that starfish in probably until about six months in on this aquarium. Uh, just to make sure that the, there is enough for him to eat. Uh, but the uh, Nasaria snails will take over that job uh, until then. And as you can see on the rock work, there's uh, small hermit crabs everywhere. 
as well as snails. So they're doing the job now, but uh, the cleanup crew definitely needs to be uh, augmented. But everyone's doing great. It's just a matter of building everything up now, just continuing the progress on the tank. Um, keep an eye on the corals, make sure everyone is, is growing well, uh, responding to the conditions and uh, building up the cleaning crew and eventually you know maybe in a few months finish off the uh, the fish livestock with some of the the smaller you know goby and blenny species uh, uh, maybe some dart fish uh, to mix in with the little bit larger tangs and uh, dwarf angelfish all right thanks for checking out the 150